Well, hi everyone, Steve Patterson here from PhotoshopEssentials.com. In this video, we'll learn how to create one of Photoshop's most popular and classic effects, placing an image inside text. As we'll see, thanks to the power of clipping masks, placing any image inside text with Photoshop is simple and easy. I'll be using Photoshop CC here, but you can follow along with any recent version of Photoshop. And if you're watching this video on our website, you also have access to the text version. So you can watch the video or read through the steps anytime you like. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is open the image we want to place inside our text. And here's the image I'll be using. I downloaded this one from Adobe Stock. If we look in the Layers panel, we can see the image sitting on the background layer, which is currently the only layer in the document. We need to make a copy of this layer. To do that, go up to the Layer menu in the menu bar along the top of the screen, choose New, and then choose Layer via Copy. You can also press the keyboard shortcut, Control J on a Windows PC, or Command J on a Mac. Either way, it won't look like anything has happened to the image, but if we look again in the Layers panel, we can see that Photoshop has made a copy of the background layer, named the copy Layer 1, and placed it above the background layer. Next, let's fill our document with a solid color, which we'll use as the background for the effect. For that, we'll use one of Photoshop's solid color fill layers. To add one, click on the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Then choose Solid Color from the top of the list. Right away, we see that our document is now filled with a solid color, in this case black. I'm actually going to choose white as the background for my effect, so to choose white, I'll click in the upper left corner of the color picker. I could also choose white by setting the R, G, and B values, which stand for red, green, and blue, each to 255. I'll click OK to close out of the color picker, and now we can see that my document is filled with white. And if we look in the Layers panel, we see our solid color fill layer, named Color Fill 1, sitting above the image layers. Because the solid color fill layer is sitting above the images, it appears in front of them in the document, which is why it's currently blocking the images from view. We actually need the solid color fill layer to be below layer 1. So click on the solid color fill layer and drag it down until you see a white highlight bar appear below layer 1. Release your mouse button, and Photoshop drops the layer into place. At this point, we're ready to add our text. Click on layer 1 to select it. Then, select the Type tool from the toolbar. With the Type tool selected, choose your font options in the Options bar along the top of the screen. Now, since our goal is to place an image within the text, generally fonts with thick letters will work best. For this tutorial, I'll choose something simple. I'll go with Arial and Black. For now, I'm going to set the size of my text to the largest size that I can choose from the presets here in the Options bar, which is 72 points. But don't worry too much about the size of your text for now, because we're going to manually resize it when we're done. Now this next step isn't absolutely necessary, but to help us see the text as we're adding it, let's set our type color to white. If your type color is already set to white, or it's set to some other color that you can easily see in front of your image, you can skip this step. To change the type color, click on the color swatch in the options bar. This again opens the color picker. I'll choose white by clicking in the upper left corner of the square or by setting the R, G, and B values each to 255. Then I'll click OK. So with your type tool selected, your font options chosen in the options bar, and your text color set to white, click inside the document and add your text. Now since I'm pretty sure this image was taken in Hawaii, I'm going to type the word Hawaii. Then to accept the text, I'll click on the check mark in the options bar. Now at the moment, the text is appearing in front of the image. And if we look in the layers panel, we can see our newly added type layer sitting above layer one. 
Since the type layer is above the image, the text appears in front of the image in the document. We actually need the type layer to appear below layer 1. So, click on the type layer and drag it down until you see that white highlight border appear, and then release your mouse button. And now the type layer is sitting below the image on layer 1, and because of that, the image is now blocking the text from view. At this point, we're ready to place the image inside the text, and to do that, we'll use a clipping mask. Select layer 1 in the Layers panel. Then, click on the Menu icon in the upper right corner of the Layers panel, and choose Create Clipping Mask from the menu. And just like that, our image now appears inside the text. If we look in the Layers panel, we can see that Layer 1 is now clipped. We can see that little arrow there pointing down at the text layer below it, which tells us that Layer 1 is clipped to the type layer below it. And what that means is that the only part of the image on Layer 1 that's still visible in the document is the area that's sitting directly over one of the letters in our text. The rest of the image that's not sitting above one of the letters is now hidden from view, and in its place we're seeing the white from our solid color fill layer. So at this point, we need to resize and reposition the text, and we can do both of those things using Photoshop's free transform command. First, select the type layer in the Layers panel. Then, go up to the Edit menu and choose Free Transform. And this places Photoshop's free transform box and handles around the text. To resize the text, click on any of the corner handles and drag it outward. Notice though that as I'm dragging, I'm also distorting the look or the shape of the letters. To keep their original shape as I'm resizing the text, I'll press and hold the shift key on my keyboard. And that locks in their original shape. Now if I want to resize the text from its center rather than from the opposite corner, I'll keep my shift key held down and I'll also press and hold the alt key on my keyboard. And that's on a Windows PC. On a Mac, I'd press and hold the option key. So that's shift alt on a Windows PC or shift option on a Mac and then I'll continue dragging out the corner handles. And now we can see that I'm resizing the text from its center. To reposition the text, I'll release my keys on the keyboard, and then I'll simply click inside the free transform box and drag the text into position. Again, I'll press and hold Shift Alt or Shift Option on a Mac, and I'll drag the corner handles outward. When you're happy with the size and position of your text, press the check mark in the options bar to accept it. Now one thing I'm not too happy with at this point is that I think there's too much space between the letters. To fix that, with my type tool still selected, I'll click between two of the letters that I want to adjust, in this case the A and the W. Then, to adjust the spacing between the letters, I'll press and hold the Alt key on my keyboard or the Option key on a Mac, and I'll use the left arrow key to move the letters closer together. If I press the right arrow key, I move them farther apart. Now this is called kerning, where we adjust the space between letters. I'll use the left arrow key just to bring the letters closer together. Then I'll release the Alt key, or Option on a Mac, and I'll press the right arrow key on my keyboard to move to the next set of letters. Again, I'll press and hold the Alt key, or Option on a Mac, and I'll use the left arrow key to bring those letters closer together. I'll release Alt or Option, and I'll press the right arrow key to move over to the next set of letters. And then I'll do the same thing again with the two letters on the end. And I think that looks good. To accept the changes, I'll again click the check mark in the options bar. Now at this point, I need to resize and reposition the text again, so with my type layer still selected, I'll go back up to the edit menu and I'll reselect Free Transform. Then I'll simply resize my text and move it back into position. Then to accept it, I'll click on the check mark. 
To complete the effect, I'll add a drop shadow to the letters. To do that, I'll click on the Layer Styles icon, the Effects icon, down here at the bottom of the Layers panel. And I'll choose Drop Shadow from the list. This opens the Layer Style dialog box set to the Drop Shadow options in the middle column. The easiest way to adjust the drop shadow is to simply click and drag inside your image and watch what happens. The shadow moves as I drag my mouse and we can see the angle and distance values changing as I drag. I'll simply move the shadow into position where I think it looks good and then I'll darken up the shadow by increasing the opacity to around 50%. Finally, to soften the edges of the shadow, I'll increase the size value. Then I'll click OK to close out of the Layer Style dialog box. To finish things up, I'm going to crop away the blank space above and below the text. So to do that, I'll select the Crop tool from the toolbar. Then I'll simply drag the top of the cropping box down, and I'll drag the bottom of the box up and all of the area outside of the cropping border is going to be cropped away. To crop the image, I'll press Enter on my keyboard or Return on a Mac, and Photoshop crops the image. So at this point, the effect is pretty much complete. We've added the image inside the text, we've added a drop shadow to the text, and we've cropped away the unwanted areas around the text. One last thing we'll look at is that right now, my background color is set to white. If I wanted to change it to something else, all I need to do is double click on the color swatch for the solid color fill layer. This reopens the color picker where we can choose a different color. We can choose a color directly from within the color picker itself, or we can move our mouse cursor into the image inside the text and then click to sample a color. I think in this case, I'll click on one of the dark shadow areas inside the trees. And that matches the color of the background to the color of the shadows. Now, of course, I've pretty much lost my drop shadow here because the background is now very dark, but that's okay. I think that looks pretty good. I'll click OK to close out of the color picker. And with that, we're done. That's how to place an image inside text using clipping masks in Photoshop. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully you learned something along the way, and I hope to see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from PhotoshopEssentials.com.